Yeah, you are welcome once again to today's um, ministration. We are we are still deliberating on the topic of hell. We have seen that hell is a place of torment. It's a place of pain. It is a place of eternal punishment. It's a place that is reserved for the devil and the fallen angel. And we have also looked at why many believers are heading towards hell. But today we want to look at a new topic, but still under hell. It's an expository topic. We want to look at Jesus descended to hell. The topic is Jesus descended to hell. Let us pray. Father, Lord, I pray that as many that go through this topic, there will be transformation. They will begin to live in newness of life. They will appreciate the work of Jesus in hell. They will see the victory that Jesus gave us when he went to hell. Father, I pray that, Lord, through this message, souls will be born again. The fire of revival will recant to. There will be restoration and renewal of mind. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So, today we are looking at Jesus descended to hell. We saw that Jesus came into the world through a virgin, Virgin Mary. And his name was prophesied by the angel of the Lord. We saw that in the book of Matthew, chapter 1. Matthew 1, verse 20 to 21. The name of Jesus was prophesied by the angel of the Lord. Matthew 1, verse 20. But why he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived is a that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. In verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Hallelujah. For he shall save his people from their sin. His name shall be called Jesus. Jesus means the deliverer, the savior. Christ means the anointed one. Now, Jesus Christ is the one that came into the world to save us from our sin. His, his name was announced by the angels. And when Jesus was 30 years, he started his ministry. In about 30 years, he started his ministry. He started his ministry, and in about 33 years, he gave up the ghost. He gave up the ghost. Jesus paid the price that no man could pay. He went to the cross of Calvary to die. Now, before Jesus died, hell has been. We have looked at many verses from the book of Old Testament, from the Psalms, Proverbs in the Old Testament to the New Testament, we have discussed about hell. But before Jesus died, there was hell. But hell was divided into two apartments. Hell was divided into two apartments. What are the apartments? One was the hell in the place of torment place of language where there is fairy flame fire burning and the other part of hell is what we call 
Abraham bosom or paradise. This is where Lazarus went to. When, if, when those that believe in God or those that believe that Christ is coming to die for their sin before Christ came, there were people that believed. The Bible says Abraham believed and it was counted to him for righteousness. They believed. They were expecting the Messiah. Before the Messiah came, they believed and they were holding on their faith. They were holding on their faith. They believe in the atonement. They believe in the work that Christ is coming to do. But they have not seen Christ. They did not meet the death of Christ. When they die, they go to hell. But that place they go to in hell is not hell fire. It's not where the fire is. They go to paradise. And they call that paradise Abraham Bozo. Because Abraham is the father of faith. We saw it in Luke chapter 16 from verse 23. Luke chapter 16 verse 23. We saw that when the rich man died, the rich man opened his eye unto hell. And he started burning. There was pain. There was language. There was sorrow. There was taste. He was crying. He was crying. And from afar, that is why I said it's two apartments. You have one apartment where they are suffering. There's fire. There's pain. There's sorrow. There's language. There's dis uh, disappointment. There's confusion. There's frustration. The other side is joy, happiness love mercy is speaking that's the side of abraham let's see luke chapter 16 verse 23 and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torment and seeth abraham afar off he seeth abraham afar off and lazarus in his bosom so that part of hell was abraham bosom that is where Lazarus went to. So before Jesus died, there had been hell. Now, but the hell is divided into two compartments or apartments. You have the place of torment, then you have the place of enjoyment or Abraham bosom or what we call paradise. So when Jesus died, Jesus went down the hell. I told you that hell is down, down the earth. Hell is not up. Hell is down the earth. Why the third heaven or the heaven where God is, is up. So we have the heaven where God is up and hell down, down the earth. We see it. Let us remind ourselves of the position of hell, which we have looked at before. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 15, verse 24. Proverbs 15, 24. I read, The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. He may depart from hell beneath. So, my brother and my sister, you see that Hell is beneath the earth. Then if you go to Psalm 55, verse 15, Psalm 55, verse 15, it said, Let death seize upon them, and let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwelling and among them. Let them go down. Down. You see, it's the David, which is a king, also a priest and prophet, also saw this and said, let them go down. Hell is down. Now, when Jesus died, Jesus descended to hell. This prophecy we have seen even in the Old Testament. 
even in the Old Testament. Let's start with the prophecy of the Old Testament. Hosea foretold this, that Jesus, or the Messiah, will descend. Hosea foretold it. He saw it, and he said it. Prophet Hosea saw it, and he, and he said it. He saw that the Messiah will go down the earth. Because... Jesus is the one that will give victory over hell. That is why he needed to descend down to, the, to hell. So that he can release those in prison. The righteous people that are in paradise. God look at them as being in prison. He, Jesus went to release them. Hosea foretold this. He saw it afar off. Let me read Hosea chapter 13, verse 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. Jesus has power over the grave. He has power over the grave. Hosea saw it. He said, I will redeem them from death. Jesus has power over death. Because death and hell, they are in the same category. He has power over death. Oh, death, I will, I will be thy plague. The Messiah will be the plague. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Jesus went to be a destruction to grave. He went to be a destruction to hell. He, he, he said, repentance shall be healed from my eyes. Jesus went to, he descended to hell. Let's see Zachariah Zachariah was another servant of God that foretold this prophecy. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. I read, as for, as for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit. Therein is no water. You see what we are told you? What I was telling you, or what you were told, that when you when those believers that died before the death of Christ, when they die, they go to hell. And in the part of hell they go to is what we call paradise or Abraham bosom. But in the eye of God, they were still referred to as prisoners. And when the Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ, came. He went there to release them. Now, before Jesus was born, this thing was prophesied. Zechariah saw it. And Zechariah said, turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. They were prisoners, but they were prisoners of hope. They were not prisoners that were in the languishing hell, where there is pain and fire and no test. That rich man was thirsty. Say, Oh, Abraham, give me water to test to the test. It was too much, my brother. If you are there, you are you are just living life. There's somebody that God is speaking to me now. You are living your life the way you like. You feel that God is there, God is on his own. Let me do the way I like. You can do what you like, but God hates sin, and the judgment of sin is terrible. This rich man, he was crying. Yeah, say, Brad, send Lazarus to just dip his hand in water and touch my tongue, for I am thirsty in this place. That was how painful it was. That was how painful it was. How are you living your Christian life? How do you live your Christian life? Do you live the way you like? Talk to people anyhow. You don't care. Oh, my brother, wherever you are, reconcile to God now. So we saw that two of these prophets of God, they prophesied, Osea prophesied about the deliverance of Christ in hell. Zechariah foretold it, that those that were in prison, the prisoners of hope, Abraham, David, they will be set loose. The prisoners of hope will be set what? They will be set loose. We have seen it. Now let's go to the New 
Testament. The New Testament in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, we read verse 27 and also verse 31. Verse 27. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer the Holy One to see corruption. Talking about Christ. Christ will not leave the soul of prisoner of hope in hell. David was one of the prisoner of hope. And David speak, yeah. David speak, he will see it. If you read verse 25, say, For David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face. David saw it. And he foresaw it. That he will not leave his soul to remain in hell. Or to suffer corruption. So Jesus went to deliver those that were prisoner of hope. To deliver David from that hell from that paradise which which they were temporarily kept but when jesus went there he defeated captivity he defeated hell he defeated hell and he took them to heaven praise the lord he said he invested therefore being a prophet and knowing that god has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loin, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He is seeing these things speak of the right, the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, that his soul was not left in hell. His flesh did see corruption. His soul was not left in hell. So Christ went to translate souls to transport the souls that departed before his death he transported them to heaven during his when he died his death was not actually a normal death he just had to experience death as a human being because he is the firstborn of every brethren let's see in that same art chapter 2 verse 34 art chapter 2 verse 34 for David is not ascended unto heaven, but he had himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand for, it, for, for, for some time, until I make thy foes thy foes too. Jesus made the foes. How? By his crucifixion. And then after that crucifixion, which is in verse 36, he delivered them to heaven. May God help us in Jesus' name. To appreciate the work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. So we see that David, Abraham, and all the departed souls of the faithful, they were in the paradise. They were temporarily kept in paradise. And they have been transported to heaven. You know, Peter, St. Peter, was the one that was talking about this. That's why Peter said, yeah, made us to know that sorrow was loose, hell was loose. That's what happened when, when they die and they are righteous. The righteous ones die, those that have faith in God. Look at what Peter said. He said, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pain of death. When Christ went to hell, he loosed the pain of death. I told you the part that he went to, he went to the compartment of the righteous, he went to the compartment of the faithful, those that believe in God, that believe in Christ, in the coming Christ, even if they have not seen him, but they believe and they live a righteous life. He went there to deliver them from the pain of death because it was not possible that he should be head of it. So he went there to deliver them. May God help us deliver us in any form of captivity in Jesus' name. In Ephesians chapter 4, St. Paul talk about it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 4. Are you there? Ephesians 4, verse 8 and 9. Please, when we are going to take your Bible, read. Take your Bible and read. Very important. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8. Wherefore he said, when he, he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive 
So Jesus led captivity captive. When we say he led captivity captive, that means he bind hell, he bind death, and he release the righteous to where? To heaven. He led captivity captive and gave gift unto men. He gave gift unto men. Before he, before he ascended, what did he do in verse, in that same Ephesians chapter 4, verse 10? He said, he that descended is the same also that what ascended up far above all heavens. That's the third heavens. And he made feel all things. So it is the same Jesus that descended to hell and released those in captivity to heaven. It's the same Jesus that ascended. That's what he's talking about. So you see that St. Paul talk about this descending of Jesus to hell. Jesus descended to hell. Let me summarize everything. So when we talk about hell, hell is real. Hell is beneath the head. Now that paradise is no longer in hell, hell is a totally a place of torment, a place of sorrow, a place of burning fairy fire. A place where the fire never quench. So hell is real. Now, when before Christ died, when the righteous die, the righteous go to paradise or what we call Abraham bosom. But when Christ died, he, the, his flesh died, but his soul went to hell to release the prisoner of hope. Who are the prisoner of hope? The righteous ones, the faithful ones. Those who, who they, they have not seen the blood of Jesus, but they believe. They have not seen Jesus died, but they believe. What about you? You have heard Jesus died. You have heard he paid the price. Why won't you believe in this Jesus? Jesus is saving soul. So we saw that Jesus went there and led captivity captive. And give gift to men. And free the prisoners of hope. He took them from place of prison to heaven. Today, if anybody, any man or woman die and is in Christ, he will go or she will go to heaven. So this is what we have seen. What is the implication or the application of what we study today? We have seen that Jesus has set us free from death. Even if we die today, we are not going down. We are going up. We are not going to hell. We are not going to paradise. We are going to heaven. Heaven has been prepared for the righteous, for those who are righteous. When we die now, we go to heaven. Wherever you are, if you have not given your life to Jesus, or you have given your life to Jesus, but you have lost the salvation of your soul, Today is another opportunity. Or you have given your life to Jesus, but there's an area of your life where you are experiencing besetting sin. Because one of the things that the Lord said will hinder people from making heaven is besetting sin. You have to set your life. Know if you have a besetting sin. The Bible told us in the book of Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 12, Hebrew 12 verse 1, that we should lay aside every sin or every weight that so easily beset us. What are the weight? What are the sin? What are the weight? What are the sin? Those sins are what we call besetting sin because they easily beset us. He said, looking unto Jesus. One of the ways to overcome it is to look unto Jesus. You have to look unto Jesus because there is no more, there is no more, um, there is no more paradise. There's no more Abraham bosom in that, in that hell. Hell is now wide. Bible made us to know that hell will never fall. Hell will never fall. And it is an opportunity that you have now. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. Wherever you are, I want you to bow down your head and begin to pray and say, Lord, help me. I want to make heaven. I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to go to hell. 
Because now hell is full capacity, bigger than before. Paradise is there by extension. We pray, Lord, that, O oh Lord God Almighty, anyone watching this broadcast, wherever they are, those that have vacillated, they will be restored. Those that have gone into the world, they have been carried away by the love of the world. Father, set them free. Set them free. Set them free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Set them free. Set them free. Set them free. Lose them. Lose them from the from the from the from the, from the snare of hell. Lose them from the from the net of hell. Lose them from the power of hell. Lose them from the love of the world. Lose them, Father. Lose them in the name of Jesus. Be free from sin. Be free in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus begin to wash them wherever they are now. Let them come out alive. Those dead in sin, come, come alive now in the name of Jesus. Come alive now, come alive now. Lord, receive them. Receive them, receive them. Let your mercy speak for them. Receive them now, receive them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. May the Lord help you to make heaven at last in the name of Jesus. Hell is no longer for you. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. Don't go back to your vomit. Pursue heaven. Pursue heaven. Don't, don't quit. Don't be tired. Don't say, I'm tired. No, pursue heaven. Heaven shall be your portion. In Jesus' name, I pray. You are blessed. God bless you. God bless you. As you continue to listen, you continue to share this um, broadcast, God will bless you. Share it to others. Tell them of the impending danger. Let them know through this broadcast. Share it. Just share it. Share it. Through your WhatsApp, you can share it. Through your Facebook, you can share it. Through your uh, any means, social media, you can share it in any form. God will help you as you do it. Or if you have not subscribed, subscribe. Listen to this word because we need redemption. We need salvation. It is not the beginning that matters. It is your ending. Your ending. He that endured to the end. Bible says, shall be saved. You will be saved at the end, not the beginning. Oh, I was born again, 1970, cannot save you. I was born again, 1980, cannot save you. 1990, cannot save you. Year 2000, cannot save you. 2010, cannot save you. 2011, cannot save you. But salvation now, what is your state now? Whatever state you are, Jesus is there to forgive you. He, will, he loves you. He is calling you. He is looking for you. Come and let us fellowship together. He said, come and let, that's what God is saying, that's what Jesus is saying, come, let us fellowship together. God help you, God bless you, in Jesus' name, you are blessed. Amen.